Today we learn how to get a machine to mimic the effects of a good old scrub. Wonderbot, go to work! They do this by replicating the lathering, scrubbing and rinsing needed to wash your dishes. Let's learn exactly how dishwashers work. To put it simply, dishwashers take in water from the supply line, which is then mixed with a special detergent designed to remove food deposits. This mixture is heated and then sprayed at high pressures on the crockery to remove the tough, baked on stains. The water is then pumped out through the waste pipe carrying all the gunk with it. Now let's look at each of the steps in more detail. Depending on your specific setup, either hot or cold water enters the dishwasher. Make sure you have the right pipe connected. Newer models, especially in Europe, are usually connected to cold water inlets. Hooking up the dishwasher to the wrong pipe can drastically affect the quality of the wash, and it could even result in damaging the internals of the system. Please make sure you check the manual for your specific model if you're unsure. The water enters via an inlet valve, which controls the rate of filling, ensuring the right levels of water are in the dishwasher during the cycle. This is a very important function, as having the incorrect water levels can result in ineffective washing, when there either isn't enough water to remove debris from the dishes, or there is too much water resulting in over-dilution, a waste of water and energy. Having the wrong amount of water can even cause damage to the dishwasher itself. This is why there's also usually a backup water level sensor sitting at the bottom of the basin. It uses a float connected to a valve which stops the flow if water exceeds a set level. This is the same mechanism you'll find in a toilet. Comment below if you want to know how they work. You normally can't see this basin as it's located under the false bottom. Inside you'll find a heating element which heats up the water to the level set by the user interface usually above 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. These temperatures are much higher than what you can achieve in hand washing and it has a dual benefit of sanitizing the dishes by killing any bacteria and making the fat and grime easier to remove by melting the grease. Some dishwashers also use steam for the same reasons. A secondary function of the heating element is drying the dishes by heating the air at the end of the cycle. An electric sump pump pushes the water through the pipes into the rotating sprayer arms at high pressures. The arms have many holes and are cleverly designed to allow the force of the jets of water to cause the rotation just like a garden sprinkler. This allows the water to reach every nook and cranny between the dishes. There's usually a couple of these arms in the dishwasher aimed at each shelf. The force of these jets of water plays a major part in removing the gunk and grime. Make sure you load the dishes face down and try face them towards the centre so the water can reach the dirtiest part of the dish. Keep taller items on the outside to allow the sprayer arms to spin freely. Also make sure to load the cutlery in the relevant tray or holder and ensure all items are dishwasher safe. Look out for a dishwasher safe symbol on the packaging. Stick to washing delicate items by hand as the high temperatures and pressures can cause materials to warp, melt or break. The water is only replaced a few times for each load, as the water is recycled through the system, meaning dishwashers can use significantly less water when compared to hand washing. It's amazing to see how effective water is at removing debris when it's pumped at high enough pressures. Tools exist that even cut metal with water. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. When little grit particles from the detergent are added to the water, this effect is amplified considerably. This recreates the scrubbing from hand washing. But it's not just the high pressure water that attacks the stains, the detergent itself is a fighter of grime. Remember, this is not a regular detergent. It's specifically formulated not to create too much froth. It's quite different from your normal dish soap. Believe me, you really don't want to put your normal soap in the dishwasher. We'll come back to why later on in the video. <laughs> Detergents can come in tablet, liquid or powder form. They may look vastly different, but they all essentially have the same composition. A top tip would be to go for the cheaper powder if it's available. 
because it allows you to vary the amount you need depending on the load, as well as use it for a pre-wash cycle. The detergent dispenser releases the detergent at the beginning of the main cycle by opening the door. There's an excellent video by Technology Connections if you want to know more about the differences in dishwasher detergents. Now let's look at what's inside the detergent. One of the most important things are the enzymes, which break the food waste into smaller and smaller segments in a similar way to the enzymes in your stomach. Enzymes are biological catalysts. This means they're used to speed up chemical reactions. In the case of the dishwasher detergent, the reaction is the breaking down of food particles to smaller, more soluble components. The particles will break down and dissolve into water without the use of enzymes if they are left for long enough and at high enough temperatures. But the enzymes in the dishwasher detergent speed up the process and lower the energy or temperatures needed to start the reaction. This is called the activation energy. These enzymes are not used up when washing, so they keep breaking down the food for the full cycle. This means that only a small amount is needed. Under 2% of the detergent is enzymes. They are constantly redistributed, carried by the water as it's pumped and sprayed around the machine. The two main types are protease for breaking down protein and amylase for breaking down starch. The different enzymes have different activation sites, which are a perfect fit for the molecules they are trying to break down. Once the enzymes and the molecules bind, the reaction can occur. The broken down molecules are then able to be dissolved and the enzyme is free to bind to other molecules. Stains made up of grease molecules are usually some of the hardest stains to remove, as they are normally not soluble in water. This is where surfactants come in. They are able to surround the grease molecules with a water-soluble surface, allowing them to be carried away by the water when the machine drains. For more info on how surfactants function, check out my video on how washing machines work. Alkalis like bleach break down hard to dissolve molecules into soluble salt particles and prevent dirt from sticking back onto the plates. Other substances that some dishwasher detergents contain include small grit-like molecules which increase the scrubbing effect, activators or catalysts allowing for the bleach and enzymes to work more effectively at lower temperatures, and anti-forming agents to stop the liquid from frothing up. Normal soap on the other hand is pretty much all surfactants. This is what causes bubbles and frothing and can be disastrous to your dishwasher. Dishwasher tablets may also contain fragrances and dyes to make them smell and look more appealing. No matter how tasty they look, please don't be tempted to eat the dishwasher tablets. I would not recommend it. Also, keep out the reach of children. A common problem is white marks on your dishes, especially on dishes that are rinsed by hand before putting them in the machine. This is because if there's nothing for the enzymes in the detergent to break down, they simply collect on the surface of the crockery. So it's better not to rinse the dishes before putting them in the dishwasher. It also has the added benefit of saving you a lot of time. I love doing dishes three times a day until I'm dead. This can also happen if you use too much detergent or if you're in a hard water area, meaning there is high mineral levels. To treat this, a separate compound called dishwasher salt can be added to prevent the buildup of lime scale. Rinse aid can also be very useful. It's added in another compartment to prevent spotting on your glasses by introducing more surfactants, which allows the water to flow off the plates easier. It's usually added in the final rinse cycle. The final piece of the jigsaw is the drainage. The water is drained by the same pump that pushes the water up the spray arms. This causes the water to flow out into the drainage system of your house. Filters are used to catch any big waste debris from entering and possibly damaging the pump or blocking the drains. They come in two main categories, simple manual clean filters and the less common self-cleaning filters, which feature motorized pulverizers and grinders to break down waste. They are also significantly louder. Both do need to be cleaned but the manual filters much more regularly. 
Dishwasher cleaning kits can be used where you run an empty cycle to clean the full system. A cleaner dishwasher will give you cleaner dishes. A common mistake is not cleaning the filters regularly or at all. Also take care to unclog any holes in the spray arms and check for any debris buildup. New developments include sensors which can measure how clean the dishes are by shining a light through the water and measuring absorption. Innovations also include mini countertop dishwashers for smaller spaces or even concealed dishwasher cupboards. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe if you think I earned it and give me some more recommendations for future videos.